Hey, Cameron here with C Butters Tech, and we are looking at the top three tips and tricks for your Minis Forum V3. And those top three are going to be uh, things that have come from the community, uh, from some really awesome contributors, uh, both Wobble and Mudkip. And uh, I'm going to leave a link to this GitHub, but it has some details so you can follow along and find the right downloads. Uh, but the first thing we're going to be looking at is increasing your uh, VRR levels. By stock, if you uh, press Alt-R and look at your AMD graphics uh, driver controller, and you go to the gaming section and then under display, at stock levels, when you go to the display specs, you'll find that the free sync range is only 60 hertz to 165 hertz um, and by using this mod you can actually do uh, 36 hertz to 165 hertz on the VRR which as we know this is a you know not super high powered device so having VRR between 36 frames per second and above is going to be super helpful because sometimes a lot of games can't push 60 frames a second, but they can definitely push 36, and you're going to get that smoothness of motion uh, with this trick. So um, I'm going to walk you through that if you've never used uh, CRU. But let's go look at their website there. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is the actual V3 profile. Go ahead and download that. By clicking on that, you're in the zip file, and uh, you can click Download Raw File here. And now we have uh, the CRU V3 profile, but basically you're just going to right click on these and extract all. There you go. And it looks like the, the profile actually has uh, what you need right here. And so to make this work, you're just going to click on CRU.exe. Zoom in a little bit here. You're going to have to run that as administrator. And then all you're going to do is click import you're going to select the v3 36 to 165 bin click OK and now so now you can see that you have range limits going 36 to 165 here so um, after you've done that import all you can do is click OK and reboot your computer and that's what's going to get you to have a free sync range of 36 to 165 so great great trick there uh, because like I said, that's going to increase the smoothness of your games where normally you might get tearing between 36 to 60 uh, when your game's running at that rate, uh, where this gets you a smooth experience, you know, unless you're below 36 frames a second. So really great. Um, let's look at one more thing related to graphics, and that is going to be integer scaling. And I'll put a little graphic on the screen here of what that looks like. Um, Okay, so we have integer scaling on on the left. You can see it's a little blockier. It looks like a real 1280 by 800 screen on the right. It's a lot more fuzzy. But same thing. We've got a file here on this uh, thing I'm going to give you a link to. Uh, we have integer scaling on dot reg. And you're going to go ahead and download that. So to do that, you're going to click this button and click download. And it's going to say unverified download and it's blocked. So you're going to hit that and you're going to say download unverified file. Now you normally don't want to be doing this with something you don't trust. But let me show you uh, how you can check and make sure that what you're dealing with is something safe. So if we right click this and like edit it in notepad or something, you can take a look there and you can see okay this is going to edit this registry entry and you can double check what it's doing and that it's not doing anything malicious so I would definitely recommend doing that before running any registry settings like this but uh, all you're going to do is double click that and you're going to say run and it's going to say hey we don't know if we trust this and we're going to say yes that's fine okay so we'll enter that you may want to reboot but I don't know if that's actually necessary but what that's going to give you is again in our AMD profile here. If you go to, um, if you go to display, and then you click over into here, you now have this option here, which is integer scaling, 
And again, I'll put on the screen right now, here's why that's important. And the problem with not having integer scaling is it tries to scale itself and actually kind of muddies uh, the pixels when you do that, even though it's a, uh, when you're going, well, basically we have a 2560 by 1600 display here. And if you divide both of your horizontal and your vertical pixels, you could then get to 1280 by 800 and it should be a perfect, you know, those those four pixels become one. But what you get with with scaling that's not integer scaling is it kind of gets fuzzy around the edges. So with integer scaling, you're going to get a very clean and sharp look on your games that's gonna make it look so much better. Okay, the third tip that I'm giving you is how to increase performance using some of the scripts on this page. But I wanna get a bench line first because here's the thing, I don't know if I necessarily personally recommend doing what I'm about to do, uh, just because we can see using the Minis Forum uh, application, we have some power options, right? Um, and those options include going from 15 to 20 to 28 watts as the maximum. Um, and what we saw with a lot of games and things was for example, uh, Final Fantasy 15, uh, moving from 22 watts to 28 watts really only went from a 36.13 score to a 37.70 score, which is only a 4% improvement, and you're adding six watts. So I don't know if going above the what you get with the 28 watts is super useful, but I wanna test it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get a baseline. So I do know what, you know, that game doesn't seem to scale very well, but I imagine CPU multi-core in Cinebench or rendering tasks might increase a whole lot with extra wattage. So let's go ahead and get our baseline Cinebench R23 score at 28 watts. Okay. So that pass at stock settings at 28 watts, we can see in here that our max package power was 28 watts and our max temp was 69.6. So really good results there uh, in terms of temperature. But let's go ahead and install uh, this script over here. And what we're going to do is download the v3adj.zip. We download that and we'll extract that into our C drive, which I've already done. So V380J. From there, you're going to run um, the task installer as admin. So you're gonna right click on that and say run as administrator. But before we do that, let's go ahead and see what the script is doing. Because once again, you don't wanna just let something have administrator access. So let's take a look at it. And this is going to, uh, it's going to create a scheduled task. So we say we can sell, okay, this is going to create a scheduled task uh, using uh, the startup XML files. So again, you can go review all the stuff before you do this, but I uh, am going to run this as administrator. Run anyways. And now we should have that task that is controlling things. And you'll you'll definitely want to reboot here, but you'll want to reboot for a couple different reasons. So one of those being that the more current being able to go through the system is not able to happen unless you do something in the BIOS. So we're gonna go ahead and shut down the device and I'll show you how to enter the BIOS. Okay, so with your Mini Swarm V3 off, you're going to actually push the power button and then you're going to keep tapping delete, which is in the top right corner. And that's going to let us enter the BIOS. And from here, we're going to go to setup. And then we're going to go down to advanced, go to AMD CBS. 
we're going to do SMU common options and then under system configuration we're going to actually change it from auto to 54 watts and then we're going to hit right and then we're going to go down to save and exit Okay, now with the BIOS unlocked and uh, the script installed, whenever you plug and unplug your power cable, it will apply the script that changes the wattage. And you can see that we are hitting 37, up to 37 watts now, which is a, you know, a nine watt increase. But let's see if we actually get a higher score based off of that. Okay, so at 37 watts uh, you can see that we now got a 14470 score where previously we had received a 13114 score so stock score 13114 over you know boosted wattage score 144470 which is about a 10% improvement in performance but where before we were at a very cool 69 degrees Celsius uh, the CPU actually got up to 82.6. So 10% improvement is decent. Uh, whether you want to spend that much power budget when you're plugged in or not, at the expense of some extra heat, that's really, I mean, that's really not a high temperature. You'll find like some of the ASUS ROGs that are running uh, their CPUs uh, very hot, over 90 degrees. And I imagine if you left it at the 37 watts, it would definitely continue to plug all the way up to the to the T max I would imagine um, but uh, the nice thing is you can actually set this all up to work however you want so for example you can edit the script so that it actually um, does whatever you want it to do so if you look at v3 power swap bat and we edit this with notepad um, you can see on battery, if it was at 9.5 watts, you could change that to whatever you wanted. And and if you wanted instead of 37 watts, uh, you could change that to something else. You could set that to the stock uh, 28 if you wanted, or 30 watts. Or if you wanted to be a little more conservative, set it to the 22. Uh, but this script lets you be independent from uh, the Minis Forum software, which really doesn't do much besides let you set that that TDP level. So cool script here. Um, I'll probably keep it at 28 for now and see how things go personally. So yeah, that has been uh, the three best tips for the Minis Forum V3 that's gonna get you uh, a much nicer VRR display at a lot more levels. It's gonna get you that integer scaling and a performance boost. So if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up and like. We'll be looking at some eGPU performance uh, that I have there in the background. Uh, so stay tuned for more videos on the Minis Forum V3 coming up soon.